Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Nishant Yagnik. Uh, I'm the faculty for neurosurgery in Marrow. And today we have with us Dr. Vedang. Dr. Vedang is a topper in this time's uh, INI exam. Uh, so at the outset, congratulations, Vedang. So nice to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, Vedang, this is going to be very informal. Uh, this is how we do it normally. It's not mm -hmm. really about anything except that your except your personal journey and uh, what advice you can give to others who have to go through what you've gone through. <laughs> so, you know, let's start with a little bit about that. Where are you from, Vedang? Uh, sir, uh, I'm basically from Nagpur. I've done my undergraduation from uh, Indira Gandhi Government Medical College, Nagpur. And I'm okay. currently pursuing my post-graduation from Government Medical College, Dhule, Maharashtra. No, okay, okay. And you're, uh, you're still in your residency? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be, I'm exam going. Uh, my exams are due on June 20th. Yes, sir. On June 20th. So you've yes. gotten your next step before the present step is over. So double <laughs> congratulations for that. Thank uh, you. And... Uh, How's it been? Yeah, how's how was your uh, MBBS and your MS and everything? How was the journey? So it's been uh, it's been really nice. I mean, I had a great undergraduation and then I went I came into post graduation here, and uh, it's been a journey here also uh, going through all the you know how it is, sir, uh, general surgery how it is, and it's been quite a journey with all the things coming around and then this coming as a result. I'm really happy and blessed actually to actually get this. So. Really, yeah. really when did you, when did you uh, uh, decide that you wanted to take up uh, neurosurgery as your branch? So actually, I mean, uh, not giving a very uh, uh, cliched answer on this, but first, personally speaking, I was looking forward into neurosurgery for quite some time. I mean, as an undergraduate also, and I was preparing for NIMHANS that time. I couldn't actually get through. And then, um, then in my undergraduation, uh, post-graduation, I had some opportunity uh, to do some cases, some assess some cases. And yeah. then, um, so that's why, that's how it started, actually. Oh, that's great, yeah. And uh, did you have postings in your residency in neurosurgery? Sir, actually, in my institute, uh, there is no particular posting for uh, uh, neurosurgery. It, uh, all, uh, whichever unit gets the case, the neurosurgeon comes and operates the case. So okay. basically, we keep getting neurosurgery, you know, year around. I mean, there's no particular posting. Like, we'll be doing craniotomies like twice a week or something like that. So we had quite a lot of exposure, actually, that way, yeah. That's quite nice. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you've been you've been part of the craniotomies. You've uh, uh, you've seen them. Yes, and you've seen now them. now now that this is not the AIMS interview, I can say that yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is for just general you know people to get. <laughs> you, know, get because, right uh, you know how it was uh, for the interview. I said yeah, that yeah. assisted. So yeah, I, I got the opportunity to do a few ADH and SDH alone uh, with the uh, under guidance with my. Uh, consultant and he was really you know kind to give me that opportunity so i had some chances so that way only trauma but only trauma limited to trauma that way that's okay i mean i mean an edh i i find more than sdh edhs are a bit harder because of the speed with which you have to operate and sdh you know you take out the bone you and you're done essentially you take out the bone, open the dura you're done edh when you start opening the bone it'll start bleeding a lot from the under the edges so you take very yes. flapid hitches and sometimes yes. those hitches can go through the veins. So, you know, <laughs> that's always more challenging. But doing an EDH yes. is real pressure. Yeah. Patients improve so significantly. Yes, I must have yes. uh, seen it. And yes, uh, uh, so how was your preparation? When did you start decide uh, starting to prepare? What uh, semester did you, or what year did you think that, okay, I should start preparing for this? So uh, I've been preparing for the general surgery portion of the exam. Generally, when I started off uh, in residency, I gave... Uh, a few other exams like MRCS also in the part when I was because we were the we hit we were hit with COVID in the first year, so I had oh, some yeah. time in my hand. So that's why I kind of started off with the preparing for the MRCS exam and I kind of focused on general surgery for most of my first and second year. Somewhere yeah. around I think uh, 22 um, I think October October November I uh, took call that I want I think I can take a shot at INI. It was quite a uh, unbelievable feat at that point in time uh, to think about it also so so i kind of decided okay let's let's go ahead and you know give those three four five months to just one subject it was a decision to make so i took a call and then I kind of worked out so <laughs> that's good yeah uh, yeah so uh Vedan, how did you uh, go about your preparation how did you from where did you start and then where did you finish so yes and, sir that uh, was the plan uh, i decided that Greenberg could not be done completely, but and I like I told you, sir, that uh, your first lecture, I got an idea that uh, it's going to be more of a video that I can look at in my free time and then go back to reading Greenberg uh, and areas that I know which are important now that you've covered. 
so I can focus on those important parts and then later on finish all the MCQs that were possible. That was the plan actually. That was the plan. And um, uh, so, did you? How did you find the paper this time for the neurosurgery portion? Sir, so, if you ask anyone who's actually given the exam this time in the surgery part, they would all tell tell you that the part of the general surgery portion was the problematic one. The uh, the one uh, of the I think the neurosurgery paper could actually be solved by just looking at the videos which were made in the end, the revision videos. If you see that right. out of the fifty questions, I could I could say that approximately out of fifty, you could actually get around 35, 40 out of them straight away. Yeah, Not very difficult. They had to put an image of SDH. The image was of yeah. SDH. They were asking you arteriovenoscopy and where does it come from? ICA, MCA, and such something like that. Yeah, right. Not details. So. And then two, three odd questions, I think, uh, rest of it was actually pretty much uh, you know, doable. You didn't have to go yeah. too much depth and all that. The Parkinson scale really stumped me, you know. That was the first question that, yes, uh, that people said. That I, yeah, how would you, uh, I mean, I, it was a bit beyond, I think, what uh, is expected of us. The yeah, problem I mean, is that you can make the lectures more and more complex. It's not difficult. But the problem is you'll st start misleading candidates into reading portions that are usually not asked. So, no. but when you get stumped on that question, I think it's important for people to remember everyone will get stumped on that question. Exactly. So it's not exactly. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's really nice. And uh, and what have you? Uh, okay, before we can move ahead for a couple of other things, but what have you decided to take up? Which institute? So I've taken. I've decided on Ames Delhi only. So I want to go there. It's been <laughs> It's been I'll see you in Delhi and see Yes, sir, definitely, sir. Definitely. I will definitely come and meet you. That's uh, something that I want to do. Express my gratitude personally to you and Rohan, sir, both of oh, you, okay. actually. So, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, Delhi is going to be. Yeah. So, and what about your batchmates? How many uh, What batchmates? How many batchmates do you have in your uh, PG? Sir, I got six batchmates. Uh, we have six of us in total. Uh, this is, uh, I'm uh, doing my residency. This is the yeah. first batch here. So uh, we have actually gone through a lot of different things, actually, uh, as a general surgery resident. I mean, the technical part of it, yeah. the administrative part of it. And uh, I think I'm, I'm really uh, lucky to have uh, batchmates like the ones I have. They've been very supportive. I mean, I decided to pick up an exam early on in my third year. So they had to take a little bit of work from me. And they did that with, with, without any thought. And I was really lucky that they supported me through the process. It's really nice of them. So nice, yeah. And where are you from originally? You're from Maharashtra. So actually, my I'm a, I'm a, I'm from defense background. My dad is in the Indian Air Force. So uh, I keep traveling every two years. Uh, but my basically I'm from Nagpur. So that's also one yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm basically and, from Nagpur. Uh, and your parents, and um, uh, <laughs> defense background. So you you have uh, doctors in your family, or uh, no, are you one of? No, no. And trust me, it's the situation is this that if I tell them that I want to choose between Ames Delhi and Nimhans. They won't know what Nimhans is, so so it's, it's a pretty simple choice for them. So uh, they actually uh, no, I'm the first doctor, and uh, I've been blessed to have parents uh, who are really supportive for the kind of journey that we go through as doctors. I mean, years after years after not you know giving time to family sometimes and the tension and all that. So uh, being from a non-medical background, still they kind of understood that he's doing something different, and they've been really supportive. And they, uh, my dad is currently posted to Shillong. So, you know, oh, they are here and there. So, it's, it's nice. I right. keep talking to them. It's very important that way. I think that's a very important factor. I agree. That's a very important what I keep telling people that, you know, you really need that background support. And if you're married, even further, because I was married in my PG, <laughs> one of the few okay. people who married in the PG. So, okay. but my wife understood. Now she knows she's not a non medical, but she understands GCS because she's seen me through <laughs> my residency. There'll be a call of her for an EDH and she'll see the CT and then she'll say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's just great. So, uh, any 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 uh, advice you have for uh, uh, other candidates? Uh, uh, sir, like candidates. I was saying, sir, the the advice that I spoke about the study part is just one part of it, and I think the more important part is what you do when you're not studying. Uh, as a resident who I was a JR three, so the kind of work we do, the kind of uh, pressure we get from our seniors, or the kind of pressure we get from the patients, and how we manage the operative operative procedures, the patients dying, and all that. I think what is important is, you know, when you come back and sit to the table and, you know, work and, you know, you think that you can actually do it. You know, I keep remembering what my father, you know, tells me often that it's all in your head. I mean, I come from a periphery institute and I think yeah. uh, setting limits for yourself, that makes a lot of difference. And I think in INI especially, 
a lot of people don't even think about it because that because they set limits for themselves so i believe that it's all in our heads and i believe that we should actually uh, my my advice to all my juniors batchmates and even seniors who are actually appearing for this exam would be that they should actually think of you know breaking the limits you know think of going ahead and you know uh, actually thinking that they can actually this can actually work out that is the more important part rather than the actually study part even sir actually if i would share with you i in my uh, interview sir when i was preparing for my interview question why you want to become a neurosurgeon all my answers were coming out to be pretty cliche and yeah. all the people i i all the people i spoke to then they told me that your answers are very cliche and i kind of told them that you know let them be cliche i mean i have reasons that are cliche to be a neurosurgeon and i i and i don't mind it you know i think that uh, cliche doesn't get old you know i mean it's it's something that um, the kind of cliche the kind of cliche work the kind of cliche passion that you have towards the subject makes you come back and sit uh, on the table to study when things don't actually work out in the hospital so my advice to all the people who are preparing especially for ini is to actually you know think of widening their horizons and you know, of thinking beyond what they can do and setting limits and kind of be cliche about what they want to do that's good yeah so uh, what the, you know i don't uh, talk about this much because it's something difficult to explain when you are sitting in an interview uh, or with someone i think you can see it in their eyes if they're bullshitting <laughs> so if so you know the whole point is to uh, be authentic So sure. if you are if you are a person who's old school who's cliched but you know you they can see it in your eyes that this person means business that's what they want they want a practical person sitting in front of them and telling them that I'm going to tell you the good news I'm going to tell you the bad news just as much so I think that's great advice I think the ultimately you have to be true. if you're true to yourself it shows in your face and it shows in your studies uh, definitely and I think you're a real inspiration to uh, everyone with that and uh, uh, you know. coming in the future it, i always say this to um, even the previous i and i and the neat uh, you know those who got through neat they still in touch with me um, i meet them sometimes and recently i met someone in uh, the, there was a conference in pj and there was an alumni meet so even there i met some of uh, our juniors and it's it's a tough branch it's a tough field it's a tough life as you can see you know and uh, <laughs> late nights and everything so i was just i was just concluding here vedan so i was saying ki um, so i've been in touch with a lot of people who've gotten through even in the previous exams and uh, neurosurgery residency is tough one of the toughest things i have done for sure so uh, um so at any point of time if you ever need any help uh, i'm here for academic personal non academic you know all of those issues i'm uh, even, even here after you finish your residency and you need to decide what you want to do your fellowships where you want to settle down so uh, this is a think of it as a long term relationship and yes. uh, you know best of luck uh, for the coming future uh, you're going to have a <laughs> hell of a time and uh, you know congratulations again and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully i see you in delhi yeah we'll meet up sure, 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 sir. have definitely. a couple of drinks yes sir definitely sir <laughs> definitely. definitely yes sir sure thanks yeah thanks uh, thanks vedant thank you sir good night sir yeah. good night